Hey guys, welcome along. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the no notifications bell. And also, if you like this, give me a like. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. Um, and if you really don't like it, hit that thumbs down twice, yeah? Okay, um, <clears throat> review time. This is the Meng A7V tank, made by Krupp, from uh, World War I. And this has literally just arrived. Um, I've done an unwrapping video of it, which is actually uploading now as we speak. So, yeah, here we are now. It's Saturday morning. So, a um, little bit of history about this tank. Um, as I said in my unwrapping video, very, very funny thing. It was built um, by, by the Germans. It was their first attempt at a tank. They'd never built a track vehicle before, so they knew nothing about tracks or anything. And this has actually got Caterpillar tracks in it, unbelievably. It's armed with machine guns on the side and on the back, and it has a, a cannon, a big gun on the front. The driver sat up in this area up at the top here, uh, and as you can see, the tank was very tall and not very wide, so it was susceptible to falling over, and it was also a very easy target for um, for anybody firing from a distance. Um, so, yeah, they, they actually ordered 100, but because of all the political whatever was going on in Germany at the time, they actually got reduced to 10. Um, there's only one left, it's in Australia. Uh, apparently back in the 80s the Germans tried to get it back but failed. So the Australians have kept hold of it. I don't know how the Australians got hold of it, maybe you can tell me in the comments. Um, it seems very strange that a tank from World War I made it all the way down to Australia. Um, but then it's the same with the Junkers J1, the only complete one left in the world is actually in Canada. You know, what's it doing there? There are hundreds made and then end up in Canada. The only one left. So, um... So yeah, this is the kit, this is the box, and it's absolutely beautiful. I got this for just over £30 off a guy on eBay. Um, really, really stunned, really, really pleased, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm very much forward to the build. <clears throat> Talking about the build, this is going to be a buddy build with another guy on YouTube, YouTube Benoit, and his name, well, I, think, I hope I'm not slaughtering his name, I think it's Benoit. His, um, his name is Road Hobby Corner. On, um, on YouTube that's his channel name and we're gonna do a buddy build on this and I'm thinking um, why don't we invite anyone else to join in and build the same kit it's not a World War one buddy build it's not a World War tank buddy build and it's not an armor buddy build it's a build of this kit okay now I don't know if he's going to agree or not maybe if you want to build one of the other ones there's the MHAR one and there's that other one is it Fields of Valor or something? There's another one which is a simple sort of 10 part kit, I believe. But uh, that's up to him. But uh, yeah, it's not a World War One buddy build. It's not a World War Tank buddy build. It's not an armor buddy build. It's a buddy build of this kit. So if you want to join in, feel free. I don't know how buddy builds work on YouTube. Never done one. Um, I'd be interested to know. And I look forward to finding out. So let's have a quick look in the box. Um, I have had a very quick look through this, but not really in very much depth. So we've got a lovely instruction manual then, glossy again, which is great. So we've got one sprue of tracks, and then we've got two, four, six, seven, eight, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen sprues of Tan plastic, four sprues of black plastic, and one sprue of PE. So yeah, quite a lot in there. So uh, let's have a quick look at the instructions first. So um, as I say again, glossy, which is great for doing reviews. <laughs> Not, um, but when we get inside, I think the paint, the uh, paperwork will become less shiny. Here we go. So yeah, if you want to have a read about some history, what I'll do is I'll hold this up in front of the camera and then you can have a read at the bottom there in English okay and then turning over the page here we go you can see that there and you can pause and read away to your heart's content interesting it says at the bottom something about the um Whereas it says there the uh, the tank had a um, a big red monster holding a British tank under its arm as part of it, as its um, 
as its decoration, the, the original one, the only one that's left. So going into the instructions here, we've got our tools and our do's and don't do's and sort of don't stick knives in your eyes and don't drink Tammy extra thin because it'll make you poo a lot. Um, so straight into the assembly, we've got the wheels, suspension parts, there's two of those, two of those, two of those. There's going to be a lot of um, sort of mirror copying, um, two of those, one each of those, they're the idlers by the look of it. And then we've got these uh, track parts going together to make these little chassis assemblies. Those are the individual chassis assemblies with um, springs. I'll bet you, I know nothing about this tank, and I haven't looked through the instruction manual. I'll bet this is very, very advanced. Even in the early days, I bet the Germans had really advanced engineering. I mean, I'm looking at this, it looks like it has some kind of leaf or torsion spring. And then there's some coil springs here by the look of it. And all pivoting. I mean, it had suspension. Our poor guys didn't, you know, it's uh, it's incredible. Really. The Germans have always been incredible with their armour, haven't they? They just, why didn't they just make, like us, we made so much, you know, we made millions and millions of the same thing and they just tried to make millions and millions of different variants. And I did hear once that apparently their half tracks um, had needle roller bearings in the tracks in every every rotating or every spindle, you know, every joint pivot in the in the tracks had needle roller bearings you know the russians had a pin that was kept in by a bloody welded on angled plate that knocked the pins back in as the tracks went round. you know so uh they yeah, always been great engineers but um yeah i won't say anymore so um okay coming up for that we've got the floor we're building here i do happen to know from a documentary i saw if you look here you've got this this shape here with the the central area they wanted to build a universal tract platform that they could use for lots of other stuff so this was just a platform with a tank body on it essentially um my dog is actually on the workbench and is likely to appear from the right in a second um so yeah here we go we're putting the suspension in now adding the tracks there you've got to glue two parts together so there's 96 um parts to glue together so that's 192 parts to actually glue together and make up 96 links. I guess that's going to be 96 links a side, isn't it? I'm guessing that's going to be. Well, we can count that after. It's either going to be 96 links a side or 96 links in total. I should imagine it's 96 a side. So it's going to be like nearly 400 parts you've got to uh, clean up and glue together. Here we go again. Remember the Mark 4 build? It drove me crazy. Beautiful um, driver area here with the, the seat detail and everything and the the levers and everything they use to steer the tank um, and then we've got some radiator detail I think Meng actually made a limited edition to this kit that actually had engine detail as well so um, if you look at that you might be able to scratch something if you feel that way inclined um, and then we're starting on the machine gun assembly but oh, this is the, the cannon assembly at the front it looks very similar to a Mark IV tank all this doesn't it and then we've got um, ammo boxes by the look of it going together. Then we're fitting the ammo box, fitting the gun, fitting some rifles. This is all very nice. A lot of interior detail. And then we've got all the interior detail on the side panels, putting the machine guns in, building the machine guns. What are these spandos? I'm not exactly sure what they are. Lovely detail by the look of it on the um, on the uh, armament there. The, the bullets that's even nicer if, if it's as molded as nicely as it's drawn there it's even nicer than wing nut wings um yes i did say it's even nicer than wing nut wings uh putting all the sides together here i'm guessing you leave the top loose so you can see inside and then putting some armament onto the bottom there um what's this this is the covers over the hooks they have these covers to stop the hooks getting damaged or caught in anything then we've got door detail with interior door detail, uh, adding some window covers, some more bits and pieces here. I don't know what these little bits here are. Um, and then adding the the armoured covers for the for the sites looking at the driver's area. And then building up the driver's area, putting together the roof. So you've got interior detail for the roof as well. Just hope it's not covering the ejection pin marks. Then we're actually putting the putting the roof on. Um, it's not telling you to not glue it, so I don't know if it has to be glued or if it will fit well enough without being glued. And then at the back here we've got the sprue call out and our colour guide. And um, I wish I wish people wouldn't do this. Why don't they do the same as 
bring that wings and give you an FS colour or a name or something. Because all these colours here, these are what, these AK or are they um, ammo? So they're Vallejo, okay, so that's not so bad, sorry. I'll take that back, they're, they're Vallejo colours, but, um, sorry, Vallejo colours. Uh, a lot of them now have sold their souls to MIG ammo or AK or whatever, and they just find their nearest approximate and put a number to it. It's, um, it's quite annoying. But uh, no, I take that back. I'm wrong. This is actually the um, Vallejo colours. So anyway, there's the colour call outs, decal placement and everything. That's going to be fun, getting the decals to go over the slats. So there's the instructions. I'll get these sprues um, taken out of their bags and we'll have a look. Right, so I've got all the uh, sprues out of the bags now. Let's start off having a quick look at the decals. Um, typical Meng, not really glossy, not very shiny. Not very matte either, but um, in register and looking like these are probably thick enough to be usable, you know, without showing too much camo through them. But, uh, you know, if you're going to weather this model, then you're not really too worried about this anyway. But um, very nice decals anyway. Um, if you remember on my Whippet build, I used the main decals and uh, they were incredible. They just disappeared. It absolutely just melted into the paint beautifully. Unfortunately, my P's got a little bent in transit. Um, it looks like it's happened from the factory rather than between sellers, if you like, because it looks like what's happened is that the sprues on top of it and underneath it was this this roll of rope. So it's obviously caused a stress point, but you know, I'm not worried about this at all. It'll be easy enough to sort out. If anything, that has a bit of realism. Um, so we've got the photo etch parts there. Nice thin bit of brass, um, no plastic coating on it, no dafty nickel plated or anything. So, uh, yeah, lovely. Some nice um, parts. And knowing Meng, all these will fit beautifully. Like, there'll be bolt heads that those holes there go around and it'll just fit like a dream, I'm sure. So, uh, it was the date of this 2014. So, uh, it's not that old a kit. What's the date on here? 2015. So, it's, it's, it's actually newer than I thought. So, um... So that's those bits. So I'll go through the, the sprues in um, alphabetical order. So here we've got sprue A. And we've got the main floor here. This will be the uprights for the um, for the radiators and the uprights to support the, you know, the driver's area. Some drums by the look of it. Suspension components. Um, or subframes, should I say. And you can see there's some lovely detail on those. Subframes there, lovely bolt head detail, all will be underneath. Um, I wonder if they're actually torsion bars. I'm not sure. Be interesting to find out. But you know, nevertheless, this this tank had suspension. You know, our boys didn't, as I said earlier. So uh, I'm sure this was um, luxury to ride in rather than one of ours. But then saying that, ours had eight men. These had up to twenty two men. But I guess these were a bit bigger. So we've got some main chassis rails here, um, drive train components by the look of it, levers for the driver. And if you notice, as with most main kits, this is all still on the sprue. Nothing's bent, distorted, snapped off, damaged or anything. Got some pretty hefty ejector part pin marks here, but it uh, looks like they'll be easy enough to just sand out or, or fill. Um, yeah, that's going to be underneath. That's obviously the, the diamond plate there. Nice. And we've got these sprues here, which are all the wheels. This is sprue C. Um, and there's four here, which are identical. So I'll just look at one of them. Um, cross bracing here for the chassis, I think. And all the different road wheels. A bit of crisp detail on those. Some nice bolt head detail on those cross braces. Um, this is part of the... These go on the outside and support the wheels. You've got the pins on the back and look at the beautiful molding there, what they thought of there that they, you know, so those pins don't get damaged. They've molded on these pieces here to protect them. Other manufacturers, please take note. So yeah, nice, very nice. Um, sprue D, again, we've got two of these. So I'll just, we'll just look at the one. Quick change there because I noticed one of these seats that on the other sprue that seat was starting to fall off. And I've just said about how good they are because the parts don't fall off. So don't make yourself look stupid. Um, right, so we've got more um, suspension parts there. Radiator, lovely finish on that. It's really nice. Really, really nice. 
um, sprockets. So this is idler there, driver's seat. Oh, look at the detail on that's nice, isn't it? Lovely finish on that seat. That just needs painting. And my usual, um, paint it whatever colour you're going to do it and then wipe it over with a greasy finger. <laughs> it looks great. Oh, naturel. You see, they've done the same here with these four pins, but they've only left the end pieces rather than at the side. So I should be, have to be careful when I'm bagging those back up. Then we've got sprue E, which is obviously the main side panels of the tank. A um, little bit of warpage on here. Maybe out of the mould a bit too quick, but uh, not worried about that at all. When it, once it comes out of the um, once it comes out of the sprue, it'll be easy to keep straight. So yeah, lovely detail inside and out. Um, there's these. It looks like these are injector pins. Yeah, they're people call them injector pin marks. They're not. They're ejector pin marks. I don't know if people know how a mold tool works, but basically you've got two halves of a mold. Shuts up. One side is just dead, just a dead side. The other side has all the plastic injected. I say dead. Sometimes they'll have injector pins and everything in that side, but. Let's just say, for example, on this one, the plastic is being injected. Where's the plastic being injected on this one? I can't see. But anyway, whatever side the plastic is injected on, so you've got the two halves of the mould, plastic could be injected from either side. And the ejector pins in this mold will be on this side because if you look at this side the detail here is a lot more simple than this side here so what will happen is if it's when it's molded if it's likely to stick to the mold at all it'll be this side that sticks so what they do is they put ejector pins which are basically pins within the mold so if you can imagine if i was making a mold of my hand yeah and i was going down into this shape here it's quite a complex shape, so when the mould comes apart, the plastic's going to stick. So you put an ejector pin in there, and it's basically a hydraulically operated or mechanically operated pin that pushes it out. And obviously, because that pin forms part of the surface of the mould, you're going to get a mark when it's an ejector pin. So they're actually, people call them injector pin marks, they're not, they're ejector pins. And then you get the ones which have got the big piece of plastic hanging off the side of them, like a wedge. They're done so that as the ejector pin pushes out, it holds on to it as well. So they're called Z pins or Z pins. So um, in this case here, rather than have ejector pin marks on the inner walls that you have to fill, what they've done, they've tried to make flat square areas as ejector pin marks, as ejector pins, so that you don't get these pin marks. And um, as a result, they've left you with a square panel that you can either leave and it'll pick up a bit of wash when you weather it, or you could sand it flat. But um, it's certainly not there in real life. So uh, that's what ejector pins are all about. And this is also where you'll see ejector pins here, 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 all along here. Look. Yeah, so that's that's how it works. And normally you can see, like on some trumpeter kits or whatever, uh, many other kits, you'll see a lump of plastic that's been either hacked off or melted off. That's where the plastic's gone in. And that'll either be what's called a hot runner or a cold runner. A cold runner is obviously where the plastic goes in and it's not heated. A hot runner is where the plastic goes in and it's heated. So there you go. Right, lesson over. Sorry about the lecture. Um, so this one, yeah, we've got a bit of flash here. Look, oh my dear. Um, lovely, lovely detail on the uh, on the external surfaces there. It's going to look great with some weathering, just like that Mark IV did. And then we've got the, the roof section there. There's some panels that go on here to cover them up. And then you've got the interior detail. Again, no ejector pin marks. And here you can see there's those Z-pins I was talking about. Yeah, and what that is, that is an ejector pin. Let's see if I can get it to focus. That's an ejector pin. And obviously the pin, rather than being like a straight pin, they've cut a section out of it. And what that does, it kind of holds it in place, or they can also use it as a place to, you want plastic to, you want this plastic here of your moulding, you want to be part of the, the flow. So if you need plastic to flow past something and risk getting, you know, a short shot or poor moulding at the ex extreme end of the channel you're moulding down, you can extend down into these and then th this will ensure that the plastic here is fresh. Oh dear. Right, there's no ejector pin marks in any of this, which is absolutely lovely. Oh, tell a lie. 
There are, there's one there, one there. <laughs> there's me saying there's no injector pin marks. There's actually 12 on here. So uh, yeah, but they're very, very small and they're very slightly raised. So they'll sand out beautifully. And I mean, really at the end of the day, they're in the inside the roof. So I don't know how much fuss you're gonna make about that. So looking on here, well, there's bits of injector pin marks falling off. Sprue G. And we've got some um, floor panelling here, which is really nice. Some more panelling, detail parts, brackets. This is the shield for the machine gun. Some gear parts. I'm assuming this is oh, not the machine gun, the actual cannon on the front. Um, lots of lovely little detail parts you can see here. As usual with Meng, beautifully crisply moulded. Beautifully crisply moulded diamond floor pattern. No, it's not checker plate, it's diamond floor plating floor plating yeah all very very nice and then sprue h we've got the driver's area lookout front and back and there's two areas on the side as well some more plating some more hole plate i think these are the bits that go up underneath the front and back ammunition storage by the look of it that's the little um armored windows or armoured covers, should I say. And you see, this this annoys me when manufacturers this. They go to the trouble of putting the nice bit of rivet detail in and a bloody great ejector pin mark in the middle of it. What's the point? <laughs> They've done the same here. Look, you see, you've got the ejector pin marks here. They needn't be there. They could have put a couple of tabs on the outside here rather than do that. And we're getting close to the end now. This is um, Sprue J. This is another mirrored sprue. So, uh, ammo boxes by looking for is that machine gun breaches? Um, some more panelling there. Some lovely detail on these little parts here. I don't know what they are. And there's the plates that go on top. I think this is the ventilation system. And these the side lookouts here for the for the uh, for the driver and co-driver or whatever. Lovely. And we've got this one here, another mirrored one, mirrored one, sorry, mirrored one. We've got three of those. And here are the machine guns. And unfortunately, if they are supposed to be cooling jackets, there is no detail on them whatsoever. Nothing at all. So whether there's some P to go around them. I don't think so. I don't think that P is for the guns. Um, but there's no, there's not even a hint of any holes on there, so these could do with replacing, really. If indeed they're supposed to have holes, I'm assuming the aircraft cooling jackets have holes in them, so I assume these do too. Um, yeah. If that's, these ammo belts are um, very, very nice. They're nicer than the main ones. The, um, nice them that you get in the wing, not wings fuckery for anyway. And then final pair of tan sprues. We've got the little one here with the rifles on. And there's one with a bane there, which is a nice touch. And so these are the old uh, World War I hand grenades. So yeah, very nice. And then we've got the tracks, the beloved tracks, which you know I love so much. Just got one, they've got four of these sprues. Uh, so we've got the actual track patterns themselves. I'll show you the whole sprue. The track patterns themselves, and then we've got the the link parts, which they've simplified by not making them like the uh, Tacker Mark IV. It's just actually one part, one link, and it says 96 times. It's two, four, six, seven. So that's 28 on there. 28. So I've got um, four times 28 is 112. So uh, yeah, it must be 96 links in total then, 48 aside. So yeah, all in all, a lovely kit. This is the Meng A7 Krupp tank. Now I'm just looking at these machine guns and there is nothing that goes on them. So it does look like they are just plain. And it looks like here, looking at this image on here, they're just plain as well. I'll have to do some research and see. Um, it's a bit weird that they'd have the machine gun barrels with no cooling jackets, unless these are water 
cooled maybe they're solid cylinders with water going down them please tell me in the comments below somebody's looking at this and there's bound to be no insight come on Mike you should know this you should know what you're saying you're doing a bloody kit review I can't stand watching YouTube and people aren't talking about well sorry you don't have to watch anyway <laughs> um, thanks for watching I'll uh, be doing a build of this very soon obviously waiting for Benoit Benoit I'm sorry mate Roadie Hobby Corner waiting for him to get hold of his kit and then we'll make a start and if anybody else wants to join in then feel free we're obviously not going to wait forever but we can wait a couple of weeks so um thanks for watching like subscribe and uh see you all soon bye bye